What's up everybody? In today's video, I'm finally pouring concrete again. I'll be making a few concrete crafts that I can use around my home and best part of all, the molds were completely free. If you like DIYs, home improvement, and cleaning motivation, then please feel free to subscribe. I post every week and would love to have you here. Don't forget to do all the stuff to get notifications of all my videos. So yeah, my concrete supplies are still on the patio. We'll get this back into the garage someday. I'm just psyched that I can get back in here to pour again today. I recently purchased this mini battery powered mixer and I know it might add some bubbles to the pour, but I'm really hoping it helps to speed up my mix time. I need to cut off the top of the detergent bottle and I want the mold to stay relatively even so I'm using the stable pen trick. I'll hold my marker on top of this coaster steady as I slowly rotate the bottle. I'll use that first line as my pour to line. Then I do the same thing again just a little bit higher to get my cut line. Now, I actually struggled to cut this with my X-Acto, and I changed to a brand new blade and everything, but the bottle was just super thick, which is encouraging for the pour, but it's not so great for this thin, tiny blade. <laughs> Next time, I'll pull out my box cutter. And I brought everything out to the garage to do the mix and pour. First, I coated the molds with petroleum jelly, and that might seem like overkill because they're slick plastic, but just a few minutes ago, I did this. So I wanted to make sure they had a little bit of a slip. I'm using the recommended 4 to 1 ratio of concrete to water, but I'm not strictly measuring. I'm more using the cup lines as a loose guide. Then I put the new mixer to the test. Things seemed watery, so I added a bit more concrete, and that's when the mixer began to struggle. I mean, obviously this thing wasn't made for concrete, so this isn't a bash on the product at all but it just didn't stir into the corners like I hoped, so you'll see all kinds of clumps in this pour. Too many. I poured it back into the mix cup to eliminate them with my trusty silicone spoon. That worked great, and the second pour was the charm. I used a different attachment on the mixer and then used that as a vibrating tool against the sides to help lift out some bubbles. And that worked pretty good. At this point, it was time to mix and pour the small circle. So what do you think I'm making this for? Leave me a comment before the end of the video with your guess. Sadly, the moment I started pouring this one, I realized my surface wasn't level. I really miss my worktop space, and someday, I promise, you'll be off the patio and reinstalled. I used the tool against the side of the mold and popped bubbles again. I slid both of them into a plastic bag to slow the curing time. Once the tops start to solidify, I spritz the pieces with water every few minutes for about an hour. I live in an extremely dry area, so this usually helps me avoid cracking as the concrete cures. When the pieces felt cool to the touch, I knew the exothermic reaction was finished and the concrete was set enough to remove from the molds. I 
I was most excited about my new soap dish, so I started there. And peeps, the struggle was real trying to demold this one. I even tried to slide a Japan scraper around in case of suction or something, but nothing seemed to work. So I abandoned it for the moment and went for the others. Uh, yeah, piece of cake but I refused to give up on my soap dish. Also, I didn't want to cut this mold because I'd like to use it again, so I tried a few things. Multiple flat tools. More aggressive banging. until finally I could get my fingers beneath the edge and push the piece out of the mold. I cleared away the chunkers, then left everything to dry overnight. While everything dried, I figured why not get a jump start on tomorrow and cut out the base for the round piece. Don't forget to leave those guesses about what I'm planning to use this one for. After tracing the circle onto some cardboard, I cut that out, then used it as a guide to shape a smaller circle in some sticky back cork. With everything cured overnight, they were ready to sand the next morning. I needed to knock down any sharp edges and somewhat level off the bottoms. Of course, if I'd pour them on a level surface, that probably wouldn't be an issue. I used a medium grid sanding sheet and a little bit of elbow grease until they were flat and smooth to the touch. Then I got to painting. So, want a hint on the circle? It'll live in my kitchen. Because of that, I painted it flat black to match the concrete paper towel holder that I poured a while back. That piece is still holding up great, by the way. Well, the repour is great. I originally made that in plaster and that broke, so I made a new one in concrete. And over a year now, it's still going strong, so I have hopes for this piece too. I went with muted colors and chose two olive-toned green acrylic craft paints to seal up the saguaros. experiment just to see how it holds up without being sealed. I'm planning to use this in the garage at the slop sink. It'll hold a bar of workshop soap. So I don't want to paint it obviously, but I'm knocking down some sharp edges and leveling out the bottom using a medium grit sanding sheet. And with that, these concrete crafts were done.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing for more DIYs, home improvement, and cleaning every week. So did you guess right? Let me know below because I'm using this round concrete DIY to catch the loose salt from our salt grinder. It always ends up all over the counter and this way I should be able to somewhat contain it. I'm so excited how all of these cement pieces turned out and I love that I had some extra concrete so I could make a few saguaros. That's all I got for today. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps.